In this video, we'll concern ourselves with costing and budgeting. Accounting is the main element in operating any business. The purpose of accounting is to allow businesses to keep track of their money. Now, we could rephrase that and say one of the main functions within a business is accounting. Main in the sense of its importance. It is of critical importance that the management and the owners of the business know exactly what resources they've got and how they're using those resources. So it's not just money, it's the resources of the business. In fact there are two types of accountancy as we'll, we'll see here and in other sessions. There's management accountants who look inwards on the business and look at the, the proper usage of materials and the assets of the business, making sure that they are used efficiently and works out the costing of jobs and and ensures that there's a accuracy and correspondence between costs and prices. And So they supply a lot of information to management to enable management to make good decisions. There's a second type of accountancy which is financial accountancy which deals with, if, if you like, the, the money side of the business. Uh, the financial accountants try to keep track of the valuation of the business. They are the ones who prepare the final accounts at the end of the year. The balance sheet, the trading and profit and loss account. And in so doing they get an estimate of the value of the business. So accounting as a function within the business is of critical importance. It supplies information to management to enable them to properly run the business, but it also uh, fulfills the uh, legal obligations of the business to report honestly and openly about its financial matters um, and also to pay the required amount of tax. Accounting is all about recording, preparing and interpreting business transactions. This information is then made available to people who need it, such as managers or owners, who then uh, make decisions to improve the performance of their business. So accounting is continually recording and preparing summary statements and interpreting the various transactions and looking at the performance of the business and making sure that there's accountability throughout the business. And then they supply this information, as I said earlier, to management who can then use it. Uh, it's information, it's, it was collected as data, financial data, but then it's processed into information by the accountants who interpret it and uh, can explain it. And that information is then used by management to make good business decisions. Accounting is the main element in operating any business. It's, it's a very important element. Without it, the business would be out of control. Without it, the business would not know where it was financially at any one moment in time. It wouldn't know what, what its costs are or what its revenues are, what its obligations are indeed, what bills it has to pay and if it has the, the resources to pay those bills. The purpose of accounting is to allow businesses to keep track of their money, to keep track of their resources, and in particular their money, which is the most liquid resource they've got. Uh, but they need money to ensure that they can pay their bills. And there are specific accounts that are used to show the management what bills are due within the, the next, let's say, a month or the next few weeks. Uh, here I'm referring to the uh, break-even uh, account and also the cash flow account and in particular the cash flow account. Um, that's the subject matter of a separate video by the way. So accounting is all about recording, preparing and interpreting business transactions and then the information is made available to people who need it such as man uh, managers or owners who then make decisions to improve the performance of the business as I said earlier. Now it's important that the, the management act 
and act appropriately with that information. If not, the whole exercise of collecting and analysing the, the data, the financial data, was a waste of time. So it's important that the management appreciate the importance of accountancy. Management accounting uh, is used to monitor, plan and control the activities of the business. So management accounting is one side, as I mentioned earlier, of this division in accountancy between management accounting on one side and financial on the other. Well, management accounting uh, is used to monitor, plan and control the activities of the business. It's looking inwards on the business. And this then allows uh, a business to understand how much profit they have made and do they have enough cash to pay for employees' wages and not just employees' wages, I'll put that down as, as important, but other bills that are due in the, in the short run. For example, uh, energy charges for gas or electricity, telephone charges, uh, uh, consumables for the office, paper and ink and so whatever they use. So have they got enough cash to keep the business running in the next short period of time until some more receipts, some more sales have been made and the receipts have been taken in and cashed and, and that resource becomes available to management to continue with the business. So it's important that the management accountants are able to uh, work out how much profits have been made and uh, what cash is available to run the business. And also what level of dividends can be paid to the shareholders. Don't forget the shareholders own the business and the shareholders only invest in the business because they want a high return on their investment but they also want security of investment. They, they don't want to lose their investment, they don't want the business to close down. So there is an onus on management to uh, be open and honest and reliable in their use of resources for the business to make sure that the business continues but also can pay a good return on the investment. It's also the case that the business may wish to expand. We live in a, a highly dynamic world, a world with globalization where competition can come from just about any country uh, we are experiencing very high rates of technological progress, uh, products are changing, uh, customers' requirements are changing, customers are becoming more knowledgeable about prices and quality and what they can expect from, from goods. So businesses are under constant pressure to not just to expand as in produce more but expand in a way which enables them to uh, provide better customer service, better quality products and perhaps more products but also to uh, produce these competitively so that they can survive in the marketplace. Financial accounting and management accounting. Well uh, this diagram I've used in a, a few classes uh, on accountancy but we'll run over it again because it, it illustrates the division in accountancy. So on the one side we have financial accounting and on the other we have management accounting. Now under financial accounting we could have cash flow statement. It could also by the way uh, be done by the management accountants as well. Uh, they're quite capable of drawing up a cash flow statement. But the cash flow statement is, as I said, looking at the receipts of the business and looking at the expenditures of the business to make sure that there are sufficient funds to enable the business to continue functioning. There is the, also the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the value of the business at a particular date, um, particular day in the year, say the 31st of March. So it values the business at a moment in time and that's useful for shareholders to understand what the value of the business is. It's useful for investors who may be making decisions as to whether to invest or not. It's useful for the banks to appraise the business in terms of its viability and its, uh, its resources, particularly if the, the business is trying to borrow money from the bank. And also 
financial accounting will look into profit and loss accounts and the income statements. Profit and loss simply works out, uh, the trading account works out the gross profit of the business, looks at sales versus the cost of sales, which gives you the, the gross profit. And then the gross profit is uh, set against all of the various expenditures that the business has to uh, pay off. Uh, as I said, consumables for the office, new equipment for the office, uh, marketing expenditure, research and development, um, all sorts of expenditures come out and they will be set against the the gross profit to work out the net profit. So the, the profit and loss account works out the net profit of the business. On the management accounting side we have cost accounting, <coughs> looking at the costs of the business, looking critically at the processes of the business to see if they're efficient, working out the costs, looking at the trends in the costs and looking at uh, material costs, production costs, distribution, uh, looking at all the various costs of the business and trying to keep the business under control. And then that information can be used for decision making. So with financial accounting we have uh, financial performance of a business and targeted uh, normally at external users. For example, targeted at the shareholders, the lenders, the suppliers, the customers and the government. In other words, the financial accounts are orientated or, or pointing towards the outside, pointing towards um, stakeholders on the outside who will have an interest in the business. Shareholders, lenders, suppliers, customers and the government. The government wants to know if the business is secure, been run properly but also pays the requisite amount of tax. Management accounting, well that's in uh, intended for internal use uh, of a business in order to make the right decisions. So the management accountants are a very important resource of the business because they're able to work out the costs, working out uh, the, the cost of processes, the cost of particular goods, the cost of activities. They're able to compare these with previous figures. They're able to look at different scenarios. They have many techniques uh, within their armory that they can use to assess the uh, efficiency of a business. Now, cost accounting includes costing as a basis for pricing and stock valuation. It's very important that managers know the costs of making a product. If they don't know what the cost is, they can't put a price accurately on the product. They may be selling the product under the costs, in which case every, every unit they sell is generating a loss for the business, which is... Uh, not a good position to be in. So the costing of products is very important. It's very important that the cost accountants can work out what the direct materials in a product cost, what the perhaps the amount of labour, that might be an important issue, or it may not. The labour may be seen as a, more of a fixed factor because the workers have to be employed anyway perhaps. It depends. But what the cost accountants should be able to do is to work out how much did it cost to make that product. And this is what we call marginal cost pricing. How much does it cost to make that particular product? And then pass that figure to the managers. And the managers can then add a percentage to it and thereby generate a contribution towards the overheads and also a contribution towards the profitability of the business. Once the overheads have been paid then the company will start to make a profit. The cost accountant also deals with planning, control and performance in terms of future costs and how to monitor them using budgeting and standard costing methods. It's, it's very important that the uh, cost accountant is able to project what's likely to happen. Look at different scenarios and look at the impact of 
various changes on the organization. For example, let's say the the price of raw materials is about to increase, or the price of energy, the price of electricity is about to increase. Uh, what effect will it have on the business? What will it effect will it have on costs? And therefore, what effect will it have on the prices? And perhaps also what effect will that have on the sales of the, the business? Because they're all connected. So if we'll look at um, various uh, scenarios and try to uh, estimate the likely outcomes should one of those scenarios arise. It may. Uh, the, it, the management accountants may uh, uh, use budgeting as a means of controlling the business. They may appoint budget holders throughout the business. These may be departmental heads. Head of production, head of distribution, uh, head of the stores, and each head would be giving uh, would be given a budget, and then the management accountant, the cost accountant, would be able to monitor how that budget was being managed by the head, and any variation, uh, any variance, as we say, from the budgeted figure could be looked at and analysed, and uh, reports made accordingly. Decision making includes short term decision making. Uh, these include break even and contribution analysis. It's very important that the business knows uh, where its break even is, how many products must it produce in order to break even, so that the, the marketing department have a target. They know what they need to achieve. Uh, it's not that they're going to go easier once they've achieved it, but just everyone knows how important and how critical it is to sell a certain amount at a particular price to try and break even. Long-term decision making is more to, deal, more to do I should say with strategic management, capital budgeting and long-term finance. It's also very important. It's, it's important that the organization knows where it's going. It should have a plan that leads into the future. And it's important that the organization has costs and has as much information as possible when drawing up the strategic plans. Even though the strategic plan may stretch far into the future, perhaps for the next five years, at least it's based on something. There may be estimates, there may be uh, uh, worked out from some sort of uh, statistical trends, but it's something. and. Management may not entirely rely upon those estimates, but it's an indication of what they should take into account. And it's important that they should factor in this type of information and consult with the management accountants to, to see what the long-term trends within the business are likely to be. Cost accounting. Well, cost is the amount of resources, usually measured in monetary terms, sacrificed to achieve a particular objective. Now, this idea of cost is very similar to the way in which economists see cost. Economists and accountants see cost differently. The accountants, generally speaking, look at the what we call the explicit cost looks at the the cost of the product the cost to purchase the product the cost to make the product in terms of the resources that are used up but um, an economist would look at what's known as the explicit costs same as the accountant but also the implicit costs now the implicit costs are what's given up in order to make the product so if a company makes a particular product, it's using its resources to make that product. Therefore, it cannot make an alternative product because the resources are being used for the first one. So they're not available for the second one. So the cost of the first one is the product that's not being produced. It may sound difficult to get your head round. It's known as opportunity cost and it's well worth looking up. But it must be uh, it must be borne in mind because um, 
efficient use of resources should take into account what could have happened had the resources not been allocated in the way they were. If they were allocated differently, different outcomes could have emerged. These objectives, here is a simple example, maybe to buy a car, buy a house, this is in, in our own personal lives, or make a particular product or to perform in a certain, a certain service. Let's say, keep it simple for a moment, let's say I decide to buy a particular car. Um, the car, let's say, costs £20,000, just for argument's sake. That's the explicit cost. That's what I have to pay, £20,000. But if I buy this car, car, uh, car, car is, is called car A. If I buy car A for £20,000, I've got a car. And the people I bought it from have got my money. I've got £20,000. It's their money now. I've got their car. Now, that means I can't have the other car, car B, which is also £20,000. So in buying car A, I can't have car B. So the cost of car A is the amount I paid, £20,000, plus the fact that I can't have the other car, which I also like. So we have this idea of what's known as sometimes implicit costs or opportunity costs. and We need to build these in. The government faces this problem all the time. If it builds more hospitals, it's got less resources to build more schools. So we can have more hospitals, but less schools. If we build more schools, we have to have less hospitals. Or we have a smaller army, or we have fewer roads, or we don't have, we don't have the money to spend. If we spend it in one way, we don't have it to, to spend in another way. The aim of a business to make a product or service that is to attract customer attention, uh, such as the public or another business. So the idea behind a business is to produce a product or service that will attract attention and will gain sales. So uh, this must be uh, born in mind when looking at the costs of production. It's not just a question of making the product, it's making a product that will sell. So it may include uh, adornments, it may include special features that perhaps are, are not central to the, to the product, but as far as the, the marketing personnel are concerned, these would be vital uh, additions to the product to enable it to sell in the marketplace and to outcompete the other products in the marketplace. The more people that buy the product or service, the more profit the business will make, generally speaking. The more people who buy the product, they're, they're paying for the, the prime cost, the cost of the raw materials and perhaps the, the cost of labour, the cost of the energy used to make the product. And these will be worked out by the management accountant. But then the marketing personnel will add a percentage markup onto the costs and that will start to bring in a contribution towards the overheads. So it will start to pay for the marketing department, it will pay for the research and development department, the, the HRM department, it will pay for all of the various expenses of the business. And if sales continue to increase then that contribution eventually, all the overheads will be paid for, and that contribution will then become a contribution towards profits. So the more the business sells, the more likely it is to make a profit. It's important for any business to control its costs and increase its profit. So it's vital that management accountants are employed within businesses with the remit to uh, scrutinize costs and make sure costs are under control and monitored and also to bring about practices that will increase efficiency, productivity and thereby increase profits. Now the classification of costs, well the main costs uh, in a business include material costs, including the cost of obtaining materials and receiving them from the organisation, and also 
bringing the bringing the various raw materials into the business. This is called the the carriage inwards, or the carriage cost. Because having both the raw materials, they have to be moved into the into the factory, into the company, to be used. So it's important that material costs are accurately uh, costed. To that end, there are various debates in the literature about whether companies should order a lot or a little, have regular supplies of a small amount, or have large stock holdings, or, or even if they could use just-in-time JIT. Um, in other words, the raw materials arrive just when they're required. Uh, so in a sense, the delivery is synchronized with production. They arrive just at the moment when they're required. Um, it requires a lot of planning, a lot of efficiency, and a lot of hope as well that there's no breakdown on the way or um, the lorries delivering the product don't get stuck in traffic. Or So it, it, there are issues about using JIT. But that's a debate for other videos and other modules. So material costs, they need to be uh, carefully worked out. Labour costs are also important. Um, these uh, incur uh, costs in the form of wages and salaries, but also other employment related costs, for example, costs of um, health, uh, health and safety, uh, training, um, uh, maternity leave, um, paternity leave as well. The fathers may have uh, entitlement to be away from work for a certain period of time and get paid. Uh, get their salary as well. So all of this must be taken into account by the business and they must have reserves ready in the eventuality of this happening. So there are various costs that need to be taken into account when we consider labour. And also uh, expenses and overheads. Um, external costs such as rent, business rates, uh, electricity, gas, postage, telephones and similar items which will be documented by invoices from suppliers. To run a business requires a lot of resource and different types of resources and these must be um, factored in in running the business. There must be provision to be able to buy and acquire these facilities to enable the business to function. So in this session we've talked about costs, we've talked about the role of management accounting in particular, we've distinguished it from um, financial accounting, so we have cost and management and financial accounting, and made that distinction. We've looked at uh, the classification of costs here towards the end, and we've mentioned some issues associated with what we mean by costs in terms of uh, implicit costs and explicit costs and the idea of opportunity cost. Uh, the material in, in this uh, session runs in parallel with the material on costs in other modules and in other videos so it's wise to make sure that you consult those other materials as well and uh, research them and find them and uh, link them in to your understanding of of costs. But that's all we're going to deal with here so uh, let's say thank you for watching.